Hello everyone, my name is Chrissy and welcome to my channel. Today I'm doing my August wrap up. I read five books for the month of August, so let's get into it. The first book that I read for August is Flowers for Algernon by Daniel Keyes. This follows Charlie who has a developmental disability and he has a low IQ and he goes through a scientific experiment to raise his IQ and it works. And so we follow the consequences of that and what ends up happening to Charlie. Algernon, by the way, as in the title, refers to a rat who is also part of the experiment who in the beginning stages used to beat Charlie all the time in puzzles. As you can probably see, I tabbed this book a lot. There is a lot of thoughts I had on it. Um, I'm hoping to be able to do a video for it, but we're going to see how that goes. Um, my life is a little bit on the hectic and busy side, but I really want to do a deep dive into Charlie and kind of why he is the way he is and how his life could have been better just with, you know, decent parents. Now, this book was originally written in the late 50s. So if you pick up this book, do note that during that time, the perception of people who had developmental disabilities was not good. And there are quite a bit of stereotypes about people who have developmental disabilities that are fairly rampant in this book. But I will say that this book is ahead of its time. Like the key message to this book is treat people like people. Don't be a jerk face and just be kind and be compassionate. So I do resonate with that sense of the book, but there are some problems with it. And if I do get to a deep dive, I'll talk about those problems. The next book I read is Vanish by Tess Gerritsen. This book I buddy read with Arion from Bookzealots. And this is the fifth book in the Rizolian Isles series. Now Rizolian Isles uh, does have a TV show that's based off of the books. And it follows Isles, who is a medical examiner, and Rizzoli, who is a homicide detective and kind of their partnership to solve crimes. Vanish, as is the fifth book in the series, and we follow Rizzoli as she gets put into a hostage situation while she's pregnant with this lady. And she hears this lady's story of how she got there. And I don't know how else to talk about that specific part without getting into major spoilers. So instead I'll say there are content warnings to this book and one of them like happens in the first chapter is there are scenes of sex trafficking and sexual assault and some of it gets, gets a little bit detailed uh, to the point where I was feeling like that's a lot. Like that's hmm. So if you don't want to read about those things at all, which I completely understand, you might want to dodge this book. Now as far as me liking this book, I liked it decently. I thought it was entertaining for the most part with exception of those graphic scenes, but I thought it was a pretty good like thrillery cop detective novel. I do wish that there was more character development, but I can understand why there's not because this is the fifth book in a series. So probably most of the character development is going to be in the first couple of books instead of this one. This is very, very plot and story driven. Thank you so much, Ariane, for buddy reading this with me. It's always fun to buddy read with you. So anytime you want to, I'm down. The next book I read is Tempt Me at Midnight by Lauren Royal. This is a historical romance book, which I've been reading a lot of lately. We follow Alexandra, who's been in a grieving period for a long time. She lost her mother, father, and oldest brother in quick succession of one another. And so she's been in this kind of constant state of mourning where she hasn't been able to go and find herself a husband. She hasn't been able to go to the seasons and, you know, flirt and dance and nab herself a man. At the beginning of this book, that time of grieving has ended. And Alexandra can now go find herself a husband. Enter Tristan, who is Alexandra's girlhood crush and the best friend to her brother. Now Tristan is actually a poor, poor candidate for Alexandra to fall for because he has a scandal that has shrouded him from society. A lot of society has shunned him because of the scandal that has come up. I don't want to ruin it for spoiler sake, but just know that there is an obstacle between Alexandra being able to marry Tristan, even though both of them like each other and both of them want to be together. I'm hoping to be able to do a reviewing romance of this book because some of the aspects are a little interesting to me in that field of romantic relationships. But we'll see. As said with um, Fathers for Algernon, my life has gotten to a very busy point and there's things that I want to do, but will I have time for? I'm not sure, but it's on the table. It's, if I can get it done, 
it'll be up. Overall, I liked this book. I liked this book a lot. I thought it was entertaining. I love the side characters. It seems like with a lot of romance books, I like the side characters more than the main characters. The next book I read is Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. This book follows Emira, who is a 25 year old black woman and her ever shifting odd relationship with a woman named Alex who is in her 30s and white and she has two daughters, one of whom Emira babysits. And that is a very simplified version of the plot, but I did do a book review of this, so I will link that down in the description below if you wanna go and check it out. Overall, I like this book. Um, it has themes of subtle racism and using people for your own means and using people to try and prove that you're not racist. As far as any complaints about the book, it's really just the last 50 pages I wished weren't so rushed. I felt this book could have been longer to really bring full circle certain plot points. And the last book I read for this month, but certainly not the least, is Tempting Juliana. Juliana is the younger sister of Alexandra and it's now her time to get married. Uh, her brother's working extra hard to introduce her to a ton of bachelors. However, Juliana gets a bit sidetracked with trying to find her friend Amanda, a guy to ruin her. You see, Amanda ends up getting into an arranged marriage with this guy who she really, really, really doesn't want to marry. But her father is forcing her to like, her father's like, if you don't marry this guy, you cut off. So Amanda, not wanting to be in ruins herself, says, oh, fine. She tells Julianne about this and Julianne says, I know how to fix this. We'll introduce you to a guy and we'll put you in a compromising position with this guy. And then when you guys get caught, you'll marry this other guy. And thus sets it in motion to the plot. Now the guy that they picked is named James and he is an Earl who is also a working physician. And given that he is the male main character, I'm guessing you can find out that him and Juliana end up having feelings for one another. I love characters who have these big time flaws like meddling in other people's lives and just butting in to other people's lives and it coming to bite them in the tuchus. Like that's my jam. That's my jam in books, especially in romance books. I love it when you have two main characters who uh, love each other a lot, but all the consequences to their actions earlier in the book come like just crashing down. That's this book and I loved it. I was vastly entertained. And that is my quick wrap up for August. Have you read any of these books? Are any of these books interesting to you? Uh, please let me know your opinions down in the comments below. And thank you for sticking with me. Thank you so much for watching this video. As always and forever, may you get lost in a book.